Let's take a look at the syntax that you'll need to know in order to begin working with classes, which define a composite data type, and objects, which are values of that type. We're going to work through this video interactively and begin a REPL from within VS Code. So go ahead and run npm run REPL. And the first thing we're going to do is declare a Twitter profile class. It has three properties. We'll take a look at the exact syntax in a slide in just a moment, but let's go ahead and try defining our first class. So class Twitter profile, and you'll notice that I've capitalized the T in Twitter profile and the P, and then an open curly brace. And you'll see that once we've opened this curly brace in the REPL, we've got these three dots, meaning we're working inside of a set of curly braces, and we're going to define a property here. The property we'll define is the handle property. Its type will be string, and its default value for a new Twitter profile, you can imagine this kind of like registering a Twitter profile, is going to be the empty string. Maybe we'll have the number of followers. So this will be a number field or property, and it will begin at zero. And maybe an is private property, which is a Boolean property and defaults to true. You can imagine we have more properties than this in a real Twitter profile, but this gives us a sense that we're bundling three properties or three variables into a single concept or a single data type called a Twitter profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the closing curly brace. And what we've just done here is we've declared our Twitter profile type. Let's take a look at the slides on the exact syntax that we just followed and talk through it in a little bit more depth. So what we saw was we used the keyword class followed by a name for that class. And by convention, we're going to uppercase the first letter of a class name. This is going to help us differentiate a name in our program that is a class name versus a variable name because you know variable names we're going to start with lowercase letters. We then have a set of curly braces and inside those curly braces we're going to declare our properties. These are the variables that get bundled together in our composite data type. A property declaration looks a lot like a variable declaration where we're specifying the type, but we don't use the let keyword. We're able to get away with that and the programming language knows what we're doing because we're defining it inside of the context of a class, inside of the class body's curly braces. When we specify the default value of a property, what we're doing is we're saying when we set up a new object of this type, so it's like we're registering a new Twitter profile, this is the default value I want you to assign to this property. And when we declare a property, what we're saying is a Twitter profile object is going to have a followers property, it's gonna have a handle property, and is private property. So now that we've defined a class, how do we actually make use of it? How do we begin working with our first object? Well, let's jump back to the REPL and play around. Let's declare a variable and we'll name it a profile. Its type will be Twitter profile. And I'm gonna pause here for just a second to emphasize how cool it is that we're typing this variable as something we just invented on the previous line. This is a data type we came up with for the purposes of our own program. Unlike our primitives, which have literal values we can type in and the programming language knows exactly what we mean, what we need to do with an object is construct a new object. And we'll talk about the details of this in just a second. But if you type the keyword new followed by Twitter profile and some parentheses, this is going to set up a new Twitter profile object in our program. So when we press enter, that object was constructed. And if we asked the REPL, hey, what is a profile right now? We can see that a profile is an object of type Twitter profile. Its handle by default is an empty string. The number of followers that this object has is zero and its is private field is set to true. This is our first object that we've created and its variable name is a profile. How can we work with an object's properties? Well, if we refer to an object, so a profile, we can use the dot operator, which says, hey, look specifically inside of a profile or say the handle property and assign to it some value. So let's say Chancellor Fult. Now that we've assigned a value to this property, let's take a look at what the properties of a profile are now. And you'll notice that we've changed the handle property of this specific object in memory to be Chancellor Fult. We could access that property directly by saying a profile dot handle using the dot operator again. And we can read that it's currently Chancellor Fult. So what's the big deal about these objects? Well, let's set up another profile and its type will be Twitter profile, but using type inference, we can also just say new Twitter profile directly. And we can see that another profile 
has its own property values. So another profiles handle is the empty string. It has no followers and it is private field is true. While a profile still has the handle that we had set up for it before. So we could give another profile its own handle by saying another profile.handle is maybe Dagum Roy. And what we'll see is a profile, which is Chancellor Fult's object, still has its own handle property set to Chancellor Fult, while another profile has Dagum Roy in it. And what you'll notice is we defined a single class called Twitter Profile and we're able to set up multiple objects. Each of those objects has the same set of properties, but each of the property values is going to be different. Chancellor Fultz Twitter profile has different property values from Dagum Roy's. We began by defining a class named Twitter profile that had three properties. And what this means is every variable whose value is type Twitter profile is going to have a handle, the number of followers, and a Boolean property is private. In doing so, we invented a new data type. And so now we can declare variables whose type is that. For example, let a profile be a Twitter profile. But what's a little bit different about working with variables whose type is a composite data type is that we need to initialize them in a special way. And so we can do this in one of two ways. We can say, let a profile be of type Twitter profile and assign to that variable a new Twitter profile object. Or we can rely on type inference to say, let a profile be a new Twitter profile object. I want to emphasize that this is unlike primitives where we can assign a value directly when we're working with a variable whose type is a class or a composite data type, we must construct a new object before we can begin working with it. So what happens when you construct a new object? Well, when the processor reaches the line of code that says a profile is assigned new Twitter profile, that expression is evaluated to establish a space in memory on what's called the heap. We'll talk more specifically about what the heap is later, but imagine it's a vast bank of memory where we can store our objects. When it does so, it's setting up a space for each of our individual properties. It's like the Twitter profile has three variables bundled inside of it. It's also going to assign to each of those properties the default values established by the class. At the end of this process, a reference is assigned to the A profile variable to this object in heap memory. We'll talk more about references later, but just know that when we refer to a profile, what we're actually saying is we're referring to someplace else in memory, and it's this bundle of properties altogether. In order to read a property, we refer to an object, and then we use the dot operator. Following the dot operator, we'll have the name of the property that we're trying to read. So here, a profile is this object over in heap memory, and when we say dot, we're gonna go look at what are the properties we have available on this object. We're looking at specifically the handle property. And so that is the empty string. In order to assign to a property, we saw that we would reference the object followed by the dot operator once again, the property we're assigning to, and then we use the assignment operator followed by a value that we're trying to assign to that property. So here we're saying, hey, a profile object, your handle is now chancer full. This is the fundamental syntax you need in order to get started with classes and objects. And I would encourage you to play around with these concepts in the REPL.